All right, so the big news is already out there. Will Howard is in the transfer portal for K-State, and uh, that's obviously the headliner in all this. I think it got to the point where a lot of people were probably expecting it, or at the very least the assumption was, hey, he's probably not going to be the starting quarterback at K-State next season. Avery Johnson is there, ready to go. We saw flashes of it this year already, so it makes sense. But he's not the only guy that's gone into the portal for K-State. There are other guys that have already made their way in there as guys start to announce on this Monday. Um, it officially doesn't open up to everybody until next week, but there are rules for like grad transfers and other guys that they can just jump in there immediately, get the head start. Uh, so we know that there are already a handful of guys in there. So joining Will Howard, Jake Rubley. So you've lost two quarterbacks already if you're K-State. Uh, with Jake Rubley significant in K-State, Lori was the first four-star linebacker that Chris Kleiman landed. I remember driving back from the Liberty Bowl when Jake Rubley committed to the Cats and how big of a deal that felt. Uh, and then another big one, Treshawn Ward, one of the running backs for the Wildcats, is headed there. We'll talk about him more in a second. And then also Shane Porter uh, entered the portal. So K-State has lost two of their top three quarterbacks, one of their top two running backs, and their top TikToker on the team so and, i don't know and a really good special teams player. and a really good special teams player that is true that is very true uh yeah no i yeah i, sh I should have i should have said that instead uh shane porter does deserve his due there uh but really probably the most notable one out of those guys after will who we've already talked about so if you haven't seen that or heard what we had to say uh go find that on the youtube and make sure you go read up on plenty of the coverage over at k-state online it's trey sean ward who transferred from Florida State this past season, felt like a really big deal when K-State landed Treshawn Ward. I was excited about him all year, and I don't know that he necessarily met what I expected from him, but he certainly didn't disappoint me with how he played this year. Uh, I really liked Treshawn Ward's game. I thought he provided a nice compliment to DJ Giddens, and obviously there were some games this year where DJ Giddens has been really good, but a, a game here or there where they needed another guy that could carry the load. And Treshawn Ward did that in Lubbock, and he had some other moments this season. Uh, so what do you make of K-State losing Treshawn Ward? Yeah, I'm trying to find the right words because this one is, um, I think, easily explained, but you, you want to have the right touch on it here. I think it was expected is what I will say because – He's probably has aspirations for a bit larger of a role. I don't, he probably left Florida state because he was in search of a larger role. And I think instead he found a similar one just because DJ Giddens kind of took the bull by the horns in the middle of the year and, and really assumed a larger role for the most part. Treshawn Ward had his moments, but I thought it diminished a bit in the second half of the year, but that's no fault of his own good player. But I think he found out it's like DJ Giddens is a dude. And, and I'd like a bit more touches. He's averaging probably 10, 11 a game in that ballpark. I haven't really researched it, but that's what it felt like. And I think here, here's the interesting part of that. So he's basically in a timeshare, but he's running back number two for for all intents and purposes behind DJ Giddens. The new college football uh, environment that we live in, there's probably a noticeable difference in what you can command when it comes to NIL. So I bet he wants more touches. And I bet part of that is because more touches and that running back one distinction also means a little bit more money. Yeah, and Treshawn Ward, the talent is there that it makes sense that he can go somewhere and, and get that. And I, I think we yeah. see that with um, a handful of different guys that are, are in the portal right now for K-State or that might end up going yeah. in is that, okay, hey, maybe it doesn't make a, a ton of sense in this grand scheme. And you're like, well, they're probably not going to go somewhere that's like a, a higher status than K-State. Maybe Will Howard is, is the candidate for that. He probably will. Cause but – you're a multi-year starter at quarterback with the conference title under your yeah. belt. Like there, there's whspers about Notre Dame and Nebraska. For a while. Yeah. Now Nebraska is probably not what you're talking about there. <laughs> Nebraska it's, would be an all-timer if uh, if yeah, K State and Nebraska do a little trade over the last two seasons. There was a Adrian Martinez and Cade Warner for a player to be named later. Yeah, and that and they got it would be a pretty good player to be named later if it happened. But 
Uh, I think a lot of guys, they look around and say, okay, I'm just looking for the opportunity where I can go out and enjoy whatever I have left in my college career. And I think for Treshawn Ward, I, Treshawn Ward's a guy that I probably still expect to end up at a Power 5 program. Well, yeah. Power 4 program next season. Uh, or, you know, what, about, what about the Power 2 over there? You, don't, well, you, don't like I, you know, I don't Oregon know. State? Maybe so. Oregon um, State, Washington State. No, Treshawn Ward. Now – it's it's hard for us to kind of handicap that, right? So um, we'll see what it, it comes down to and all that. I would assume that Treshawn Ward goes to a power five, power four school. I think he could probably still command that and maybe be a running back one. It's just tough to put a finger on how these things are going to unfold because how many running backs are available. Uh, and NIL makes all these things a moving target. Blindly, I agree with you. Trayshawn Ward, you, you would think, could probably find a starting spot at a Power 4 school, but there's a lot of different circumstances that will go into that, including yeah. it's like free agency, in, and I keep going back to this, it's like free agency in the professional, you know, the professional ranks. Sometimes where you go and how much money you make also depends who's a part of your free agency class. Yeah, no, for, for, for sure. And I just think he's a guy that, he got a taste of it this year at K-State. The, he, uh, the 124 carries he had this season, the most he's ever had in his four seasons of college football. So he's had a little bit of it. And like you said, his usage faded as the season went on and not necessarily at his own fault. DJ Giddens, I think even in the middle of this season, was even better than what the expectation would have been from the K-State coaching staff. I, he took over to be a legitimate lead back and yes, you'll want guys behind him that can step up and work out. Um, but DJ Giddens is ready to go and can handle it. So Trayshawn Ward moving on makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, I wish him the best for that. Now, in terms of what this means for K-State moving forward, what what do you make of the running back situation? Because you think back last season, 2022, there were only two running backs that had more than one carry on the roster. It was Deuce Vaughn and DJ Giddens. And this year, Anthony Frias got more than one carry. Um, but where does things start to stack up, and what should people expect behind DJ Giddens next year? Because although he's a guy that can probably start to tor trend towards at least 20 carries a game next year, you're still going to want a really good number two and a guy that can be a pretty good part of the offense. So where, where does your expectation lie with what K-State does there and how they handle it? Yeah, look, I Trajan Ward, this is not meant to drag him or to really judge him in a disparaging way, but what he was able to provide Kansas State, you would hope and think with along with what you are already expecting to be given from DJ Giddens next season, that you can replace that. I know that sounds bad. I'm not look, if you could have Trajan Ward. Uh, no springs attached right now, I would still take him. Mm -hmm. But you would think if he wants to go somewhere else, you're like, we could probably find a way to absorb this loss. And I still, and I really think that whether that's with another guy in the transfer portal, probably similar to Trayshawn Ward, that is looking for that change of scenery and, and is okay with the, you know, that secondary role, perhaps maybe a little bit tougher because DJ Giddens wasn't as established last year when Trayshawn Ward picked Kansas State. So you got you to keep that in mind. DJ Giddens wasn't coming off a 1,000-yard season. Now he is a little bit tougher because of that. Um, and do you even have to go to the transfer portal? If if someone isn't available that you would consider, we got to have them, right? Like that needs to be taken into consideration because they really like Joe Jackson. And if that, that guy, and I'm just throwing out uh, – um, uh, hypothetical here. If you can't get like that Dylan Edwards or someone of that ilk, then I think from what I know that Kansas State's probably content just to we'll go forward next season. Running back number two is Joe Jackson. Yeah, I, I, I and I think, you know, K-State obviously has done a nice job with Chris Kleiman in finding guys in the transfer portal that can fill whatever role they need at running back. They did it this year with Trayshawn Ward. Now, like you said, the expectation of Trayshawn Ward when he came to K-State was probably a little bit different than what it ended up being because he probably felt like 
hey, okay, they they just lost Deuce Vaughn. I'm kind of an undersized guy. Yeah, DJ Giddens is there, but like we're going to be on even footing and battle it out for that feature back role. And DJ Giddens just was, you know, he, he was the guy this year. He makes sense. And I think back to 2019, that first season of Chris Kleiman, they had holes to fill and they filled it with James Gilbert and Jordan Brown at running back. Those guys worked for what they needed there. Obviously, Treshawn worked for what you needed here. I think they can find a guy, and they've proven to be successful at finding it if you want it. But I, I agree with you. They don't have to force the issue here because DJ Gins is ready to lead you, and you're going to have an offense next year. The expectation would be with Avery Johnson that is conducive to making life a little bit easier on the running backs because now you have a legitimate threat running the ball at quarterback, and so much emphasis and focus will be put into stopping Avery Johnson's running game that you don't even have to have as talented running backs as K-State might have next season to have success running the football. So, I, I you know, I, I, this is a loss for K-State. It's disappointing in terms of losing a guy that I think was a pretty good player for him. And also, I don't think whoever is the number two next year behind DJ Giddens, no matter who they get, unless maybe, you know, it is a guy uh, that enters the portal that is a, is a good get. I don't think they're going to have – as high of an upside in the big play department as Trayshawn Ward had, or somebody that can come into a game like against Texas Tech this year and carry the load if DJ Giddens is having an off night. I think that's going to be a struggle, um, but I think K-State can overcome that next season. This is just one of those that, from a depth perspective of guys that actually see the field, it, it's an unfortunate loss, but it's not a detrimental loss, which in Chris Kleiman's career at K-State, we haven't had many of those detrimental losses in the transfer portal. In, in this in this era of college football, it's also you, you're you're right, an unfortunate but not detrimental. It's also one of those, in my opinion, that's hard to avoid, right? Like this is you're in the new world of college football. A guy's that good, he wants to play a little bit more, wants to get a little bit more money. That's the world we live in too, right? So uh, no, it's it'll be interesting. You, you got to remember too, something that did was a nice carrot that can. That was a part of the persuasion and convincing of Trayshawn Ward to Manhattan was that everyone was coming back on the offensive line. And look, it sounds like Taylor Porte is coming back. You'll have Hadley Panzer, uh, John Pastore, Andrew Line Gang. Uh, am I missing? Carver Willis has played a lot of football at this point. But, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be a little bit more youthful and developmental in terms of what you're throwing out there in terms of an offensive line. Um, is that harder to sell? Maybe not, but because you still have some guys that have played a lot of college football. Yep, no doubt about it. It is uh, something to keep to monitor. There will be no doubt more transfer portal news for K-State over the next week, days, months, whatever it's going to be. There's a lot of different things to get into. We'll cover it from a lot of different angles over at K-State Online. Be a great place to uh, get all that and a pretty good deal going on right now. If you want to be a part of K-State Online, to be silly in the know, kind of be ahead of schedule with knowing about the transfer portal stuff. Yeah, silly season, right? It's a dollar for your your first month or 50% off half price. So uh, uh, K-State Online, <laughs> excuse me, kstateonline.com. Promise you I'll get that. Is the place to be because uh, K-State's going to be active in the transfer portal themselves. Uh, I don't think that they're going to be a player in the coaching carousel like other schools, but you, you never know, I guess. But mostly it's the race to signing day. It's the trades for portal stuff, both exits and entries. Yep, and we'll see what goes on there. I'm about to send my daughter to the transfer portal if she can uh, settle down for a little bit. But plenty more to come. We'll have uh, more on the Will Howard and everything else this week and also what it means for Avery Johnson uh, moving forward because also you're looking at a situation where – uh, this will be Avery Johnson's team come bowl, bowl game time. So a lot to address from that. Plenty more coverage at K-State Online coming in the next couple of days uh, from everybody with what we got going on in the portal and whatever else might come up in that situation. And, oh, by the way, there is a basketball game uh, this week. So about two basketball games this week before Villanova comes to town next Tuesday. So uh, it's not slowing down at all. And uh, you can get all of your news and information at K-State Online. So for Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thank you for watching K-State Online.